How the body is connected has always fascinated humans. We have gazed in awe at the skeleton, listened to the pounding heart, tested the nervous system, measured muscle strength, and dissected the body piece by piece. Every organ has been dissected and analyzed. Progress has been enormous on many levels, but some of the biggest mysteries still remain. Take the fascia, for example, which we previously only saw as that inconspicuous membrane that surrounds our muscles, organs, and skeleton. The one that was previously ignored and just thrown away when bodies were autopsied. Now, it is one of the hotter fields of research in science, and yet another puzzle piece that can help us see the body as a whole. Today we know that the fascia is a network without beginning or end and operates parallel to the nervous system and blood circulation. Why is fascia been neglected? The first anatomist wanted to understand the uh, organ more as a, uh, you know, in a system based, but they forgot the uh, holistic view of the human anatomy. So instead of uh, uh, isolating organs, uh, now we really understand the importance of the interrelation between uh, organs, which is mostly done uh, via fascia. So this is uh, uh, like a complete uh, organ in itself that is organizing uh, all the other systems together. One segment of your body is affected due to like a trauma or uh, anything. So it's easy now to uh, envision that this tension can be actually uh, migrating into your fascial network and will basically lead to secondary symptoms that will be described as painful in other regions that the patients will be consulting for, uh, which are far from the initial you know, problem. Putting into words what fascia actually is can be a challenge. Simply put, it is a network of connective tissue without beginning or end, and it essentially surrounds everything in the body from muscles and skeleton to organs and cells. Imagine that every part of the body is enveloped by thin bags, the connective tissue. These bags in turn are connected to each other, and this comprehensive network is one of the body's main structures that keeps all parts in place. This network is the fascia. And the most important thing is to know that now we can't imagine the bo human body made of separate parts. It's a global, and it's completely new. It's a, it's a paradigm shift. But uh, this paradigm shift make able to introduce new fields of science. So we can have links with mathematics, with physics, with biology. Fascia that has become stuck together or has been through trauma affects mobility. And since it has been found that there are six times more nerve cells in the fascia than in the muscles, blockages in the fascia can be associated with, for example, lower back pain. Why is fascia so difficult to understand and complex to understand? It has several impact factors. A sick fascia quickly becomes a vicious cycle. Inflammation arises, the flow of fluid and immune defense is affected, and the pain itself makes recovery more difficult. Considering the wildfire of back pain sweeping through the world with an increasingly sedentary population, it's not surprising that more and more people are starting to take an interest in the fascia. Actually, the people are treated just with the pills that reduce the symptoms, reduce the pain, but don't care really the fascia, don't, don't restore the proper anatomy of a fascia. Fascia was really totally forgot in the past. They were, were not able to see the innervation of a fascia, and consequently they considered the fascia just as an anatomical structure without a true importance. Now we change the perspective because fortunately we have understood the role of fascia and that the different elements interfere one with the other, that all the elements are connected to each other. Ma dai, fantastic! Yeah. So, so we decide how the hip can interfere with the back, with the knee, how an old trauma in the ankle can create back pain. If we understand that connection, 
with care in a different way our patient. Maybe then we need also the neurosurgeon, the orthopedic surgeon, but before we have a global vision of the patient. And I think that that can change really the medicine of the future.